We're not going to dwell on these slides. But this just tells the difference between which assets you can take the 179 on and which assets you can take the bonus on. He said new is the big thing for the bonus. That's the 50% write off. The other one, it can be new or used. Probably the big thing here is on the next slide. What if that guy didn't have big income this year and he still bought that airplane? Let's say it was a break even and said, I still need that airplane. I want to take that $2.2 million right off. It would be $179, you couldn't because you can only take it to the extent of income. Here, unlimited. We can use it on all sorts of activities, including rental. So let's go to our farmers here for a minute. <coughs> if you're a landlord and you did some piling, you're not active in that business, are you? You're renting that out to somebody else. Could you still take that 50% of the new value you put in? Yeah. Qualified as all activity, rentals included. Now, I don't know if I've given you enough time here on the 13th to get it done before the end of the year. <laughs> Just know that if you did it, be sure you talk to somebody about it. Your accountant, tax preparer. That qualifies. Major. What's a what's a heavy SUV? Many of you call me every year and say, "How much does my vehicle have to weigh? How much is it?" Six thousand pounds. It's over six thousand pounds. You get special tax treatment. Okay. If you use it for business, more than fifty percent of the time, you can write off the first twenty-five thousand of that SUV. Now, where does this fit in the big picture of taxes and economy and fuel usage and everything else? Why is this there? I don't know. There's no reason you should be able to do stuff like this. So if the last two weeks here you want an SUV, you better take care of it. But one of these days it's going to go. It should be gone a long time ago. So again, if you're going to use an SUV more than 50% business, over 6,000 pounds, you can write off the first 25,000 and appreciate the difference. All right, let's move to retirement for a little bit. We do our tax planning, we always do all our planning first, try to spend the money that we want to, take in the income, get the number where we want. If we need to do a little bit more, we start talking about putting it into a what? 401k, an individual 401k, an IRA, something like that, right? That's always our, one of our choices to get down to the end. The 401k limits, if you're under age 50, the first $17,000 that you make, you can put into your IRA. If you're 50 or over, you put in 22 okay. Now, when is this the most beneficial? 401k plans, you have to drag your employees along. What if we don't have any? It's pretty nice, isn't it? I can take my farm income of $80,000, I can put away the first 22 five if I'm 50 or over. And then I can put in 20% of my farm profit. As long as I don't exceed $50,000, I can write that much off in my retirement plan. What if you say, well, I, I just work for somebody? Hire us. Dollars aren't near as large, but we still, if you're under 50, $5,000 per year. And I tell people that and they cringe. So I don't have $5,000. Don't care, do it. That's up to $5,000. Put $1,000 in it and save you some money. Too many people think when they see this, it's got to be five. That's the most. Roth 401k. What's a Roth? Anybody remember what a Roth is? What's so good about a Roth? What's so bad about a Roth? Yeah. Roth, the bad part about a Roth is I don't get a deduction when I put it in. But what happens? tax-free throughout its life, and when you pull it out, how much tax do you pay? When do I have to start pulling it out of my Roth IRA? Never. Lots of good things about a Roth on the back end, aren't there? And if you leave it to your beneficiary, you don't have to spend it. How long can they take it into income over? Their life expectancy. Die when they're 40, they've got a 40 year life expectancy. They take that little nutshell you gave them, pull it out over 40 years tax free. 
Nice legacy, huh? Don't think about you once more. <laughs> okay, we have a number of ag clients out there. Let's take about five minutes and talk about some ag items. There's a number of things. My farmers, you know, they're great people. I love my farmers, but they have so much more in their shelf to pick from than you and I do. They have so many more things they can do. We that aren't farmers just kind of listen to this, even though you aren't there. But they can prepay their expenses for next year and deduct them this year. We do that. We take next year's mortgage interest and pay it this year. No, oh, we can't do that. They can prepay their farm expenses. They can defer their crop insurance process. Let's say they had some damage out in their field. And they got a crop insurance check. And they normally sell their crop the next year. When do they have to pick that crop insurance check up? Next year. If they want to. You get your paycheck from one of your clients, you get to choose which year you put in. Defer their livestock sales. They sell some livestock, they sell some crop this year on a deferred basis and they Say, I don't want to get paid until next January. When do they pick up the income? They get today's price. They pick it up when? Next year. Can you do that? They have so many more things to choose from. Now, would you want the risk of a farmer every night when you went to bed? Farmers out there, I'll compliment you forever. Wow, you can do everything right. Still put on the shortage. That's a tough, tough profession. But you've done it well. And uh, neither does somebody advantage. And they can pay their wages. If they pay their wages, rather than writing somebody a check, they give it to them in form. They don't have to pay Social Security. They don't have to pay unemployment tax. They don't have to work old. Prepaid farm expenses. Just remember, though, it has to be a purchase. If you have to go to the elevator and say, here's $100,000, you've got to really buy something. Got to be a business purpose. It's usually pretty easy. Buy feed for agriculture. No material distortion of income. This is the one I just always love. Farmer comes in, pays two hundred fifty thousand dollars of prepaid expenses. Does that materially distort his income? <laughs> <laughs> Never been challenged yet. Seems like that's one there that if they just decide someday they want to do something, they'll do it because right here it says you can't do that. And then the prepaid expenses can't exceed 50% of all our other expenses. They've only got, you look around with my other account, they've only got one client that beats up against this every once in a while. Okay. That's very liberal. Okay, defer crop insurance proceeds. You can elect, like we said, to defer it only if you normally sell your crop, raise it this year, sell it next year. And revenue insurance. Revenue. You guys aren't farmers don't care. But there's two types of insurance farmers can buy. They can protect their yield, and they can protect their price. So they're protecting their price, that's revenue insurance. Okay? Now, if you would see a revenue, check, revenue insurance check, that is not deferrable until next year. You gotta pick that up this year. Only the crop damage piece can go forward. Now, my understanding, revenue insurance is virtually non-existent for this year, because Prices are high enough and we don't have the situation. So it's not something you should worry about. But just know, just remember that in the future that if you have revenue insurance, that piece cannot be rolled forward. Deferred crop, deferred livestock sales. Okay? You go to the elevator, sell it in September, say I don't want my check till January. Price it. Okay? Get it done. The contract cannot allow you to get that money. You can't go in October and say, I changed my mind. And I have some farmers with smiles on their faces. How many of you people can go to your elevator and say, give me part of that money? Who else raise raising hand? Well, you're trying to raise your hand. <laughs> A lot of elevators do that. Some don't. A lot of them do. Somebody in my office asked, well, how do they doctor up the records? They're not supposed to. If you can do that, it's not the first sales contract. Because the IRS says you can't get it. But a lot of elevators can do it. Okay? Well, one of our planning techniques, let's just say we had $200,000 in crop, we sold it in September, we deferred all of it. So 
2013. If you get our check on January 2nd. Now, the installment method of accounting says that I can take my choice of taking that this year or not taking it this year. Okay? So if I did 200000 all I would do at the end of the year is say, okay, if I just sold one lump sum and got one contract, I'd have to do all or nothing, right? Why don't we break it into 10 dollars $20,000 contracts? Is that going to help you and me in our planning decide how many we want to pull in? Yeah, if you're going to sell that prop, break it down into smaller pieces. Now, your elevator person is going to say, oh, my God, i got to do 10 contracts instead of one? Your answer is yes. All right, we talked about this. We pay commodities, we don't have to pay any those taxes. Why do we start the discussion even on state taxes? Three primary reasons. We want to keep what we got. We don't want to pay any more of the government than we have to. And we want to make sure that the property goes where it's supposed to. Real simple, that's why you sit down and start talking about state planning in the first place. Why? I have a feeling that the people in agriculture, if they did their financial statement two years ago and did it today, it might have a little difference in their dollars. A lot of people don't know that because you don't just sit down and do it. You've got to know what you have, so you might have a revelation when you get done. What do we say the tax law for a state tax would be next year? What do we say about all the 2013 taxes? What do we know? Nothing. But we still got a plan. We still got, even for the last reason, we've got to know where those assets are going to go, where we want them to go. And if we're going to plan today, we're going to make some guesses, right? What's the estate tax going to do? Most important slide in here on estate taxes. Current year, through the end of 2002, 5.12 million. 5.12 million dollars tax-free transfer for each person through the end of the year. Also, see the far right-hand column? You can also gift how much away for the rest of this year. 5.12 million. In 2010, and every year before that, it was no higher than a million. My guess for 2013 is that that gift portion may very well go back to a million. Why it ever went to five million, I'll never know. Okay. I've talked to a number of my fairly wealthy, have a lot of acres of land, wanting to pass it on, use up that five million dollars this year. What's the first thing that farmer's been asking? I'll give the land away, but, but what? I want the income. Okay? Doesn't work. That's called an incomplete gift. And if that was to happen at the date of the person's gift or person's death, it would go back to that person. Okay. So that stopped about 80% of the discussions. And I understand that. People never know when they're going to have enough. People retire and start giving stuff away. Am I going to have enough after I give it away? But I've got three of them that I think will end up doing the five million. Outright gift, put it in the children's name, put it in the trust name, partnership name, whatever. Get it out of their estate. Why do they do that? Before I go to that, look what it does next year. Fiscal cliff. Go back to a million dollars. My thought on this is going to stay at the five for one more year. You're going to find by the end of the night, I'm going to tell you that most of these laws are going to get kicked in the 2013. They don't have time to wrestle with changes and figuring out what's right or wrong. They're just going to say, let it go in 13, we'll deal with it next year. I'm going to say that's going to be the case on state taxes. I'm going to say that's going to be the case on those extenders, the sales tax, the tuition, the teacher deduction, all that stuff. AMT is going to roll into next year. I think you're going to see a lot of that. And what you're going to see is they're going to put it in there and then they're going to put a little caveat on how they're going to solve the problem. So instead of having a fiscal clip, you're going to have eight or ten fiscal clips. They're going to carve it up into little pieces and kick it into 13. 
They don't have time to get it done this year. Okay. But like I said, the ANTs, the extenders, I think this will, this will stay at five. It's the most recent thing I'm getting a grip from. At worst, I think it would go back to 3.5, but what I'm really concerned about is the gift. That could easily go back to the How much can you give away each year? If we don't talk those big $5 million numbers, you can give 13000 away every year. It goes to fourteen next year. Okay. And people say, well, what, what's that mean? Do I have to pay income when I get a gift? No. When you get a Christmas gift from somebody, you put that in your tax return. That's a gift. And you get to deduct it when you write, when you give that gift to somebody. You just got to blow up the numbers now after we get past the Christmas gift example. You can give it away, but if you give away more than 13, we start digging into that 5 billion. And now we have to file a gift tax return, tell the government, now ah, we gave 13 away to this child, but we really gave him 50, so we're using 37 of that million of them, or the 5 million of them. All you do is tell them. Okay. So you have this much per year, plus you have that 5.12 million. Married couples, $26,000 per person. I qualify, so if there's any gifts that you'd like to send this way, $26,000 per couple, $28,000 next year, in case you want to wait until January and do it again. Okay. And one thing to remember for, for you grandparents out there that might like to help out your grandkids. In addition to that, if, you're, if you've been making your $13,000 gifts, you can pay their tuition and medical expenses directly. As long as you write the check to the college, you can do that in addition to the 13. So for you that are in the gifting mode, just remember you can do that and get around the $13,000 rule. Now why do we gift in the first place? Why are these farmers gifting the farmland away to their kids? Number one, we take it out of our estate. But what happens? Now the kid has it and hopefully it keeps going up, right? And if it keeps going up, who's going to pay tax on depreciation? Not you. Depreciation goes to the kids. Keeps it out of your estate. You froze your estate. Okay. That's why you're doing it. To the extent you do your 13 and 26s, there's never a tax on that. So you're just shifting that from one generation to another. And all the income off that farm, that's the part we said. That's the kicker. The income all goes to the kids. And not come back to you. That's why you're giving that land away. You're keeping your estate down. That's what you're trying to accomplish when you do that. All right. You have that paper that you saw when you came in? You got 19 items on that piece of paper. We're going to rapid fire 19 items. We're going to go through them fairly quickly. Put a little line in front of each item. If there's something that I said or something like that, we're going to go pretty fast, check it. That means you're going to talk to somebody else, talk to your account, talk to us, whoever it's going to be. Okay? So we're going to get 19 things here that we can do before the end of the year. Okay. Accelerator itemized deductions into 2012. Right. What's this mean? If we itemize, if you're taking the standard deduction, you don't have to listen. If we're itemizing, why do we want to do it this year? What's the talk? Well, we already talked about it. Capping your itemized deductions, right? They might say you can only take $25,000. You can only take $50,000. You can only take up to 28%. Okay? What's our limitation this year? No. This is a better year to do it. We know this year's law. Okay? What do we know about 13? Nothing. Cash basis tax credits, accelerate or defer? Well, that's, that's obvious, Gary. No. What am I trying to say here? If you think the tax rates are going to be lower this year and you can bring some income and get a tax this year, this is basic tax planning. You look at two years and try to balance them. So if you say, can I bring some income into this year to keep the tax the same as both years? Do it. Or maybe you're going to defer it. But that's when you're tax when you're trying to keep your income equal. So you've got bubbles and then you're getting higher tax rates, aren't you? The goal of tax planning every year is to keep it, keep it equal. <coughs> Harvest capital gains, thought that was appropriate. This isn't even an ag term. Harvest just means do it. Let's say you got a bunch of gains in your stocks. 
What's the rate this year? We know it. What? Maximum of? 15. What's it going to be next year? No. They do nothing. 20. If they do something, I think it's going to be 20. So I think in any case, you're going to be higher next year. So what's harvest to me? Sell them. Pay your 15% rate. What do you do the next day? Buy them right back. So now you've locked in all the gain at the low rate. You don't care what the rates do next year. You're only out what? A couple of commissions. Refinance home mortgages. Interest rates low or high right now? Wow. Yeah. What's your 30 year rate now? Over here. Ballpark. Three and a quarter. Three and a quarter. Fifteen. High twos. High twos. High twos, low threes. We're up to a 30 year mortgage. If you're significantly over that, great time. Great time. Costs down. Bundling itemized deductions. Wow, that sounds interesting. Okay. What do we say that standard deduction was for you guys? 11,900. 11, Let's say you every year you always paid your itemized deductions and always came up to 10. How much would you get on your tax return every year? 11,900, right? What if you took your contributions for one year and paid them twice and doubled up in one year? took your real estate taxes and paid three payments in, in that year, and now we ended up with $14,000 deductions. Okay? Which one, how much would we get? 14. And then we had all we had all the way down to five next year, how much would we get? Love and nine. When you bundle them and pay them every other year, you might get over that amount every other year. Okay. One of my partners did that religiously. Every other year he itemized, every other year he took the standard deduction. He won't. <coughs> Terrible contributions. These are always good. You can do cash. Cash is always good. But what if you had some stocks that have gone up in value? What if you donate that stock to your charity? You get the deduction for the full value, then you don't pay tax on the gain. Wow. That's fun. Number of plans to do that. Pay your federal and state fourth quarter estimates. When do they do? When's your federal estimate due? January 15th of next year. When's your state estimate due? January 31st of next year. When do you get to deduct them? When you pay it? When do you pay them in December? Okay, now. We're an AMP, we're going to qualify that every time we start talking state income taxes. The state side might not work, the federal always will. <coughs> so you pay them early, you get the deduction year early. Okay, similar to this one. You come in and you talk to me about tax planning, and we end up saying, well, the best we can do is we've got to write a check for 20000 on April 15th. Okay, we know. We figured it all out. Closest we can get, we owe a check for twenty. Why don't I write in December? When do I get to deduct it? When I pay it. This timing thing, just when you do things. Real estate taxes. You got a September payment and a March payment, they're the same, right? You got fiscal year that runs to June 30, so you got you know what the amount is due March 31st. Why wait till March? Pay it in December. When do you get the deduction? You pay it. College Savings Iowa, Section 529 plans. For your children, for your grandchildren, for yourself. Any deductions for that? Not on the federal, but on Iowa there sure is. Up to $2,975 per person per year. If you have four kids, four grandkids, four times $2,975, roughly 12 grand. Deduction on the state return. If I make $50 million, can I take this deduction? Yes, no okay. cap. Everybody can do that. IRA contributions for children. The kids go out, they make four or five thousand dollars. I'm sure the first thing they did with it is put it in their IRA, right? <laughs> <laughs> but now you're sitting there on February 15th and saying, it'd be nice to throw some money in there. 
Give them the five, have them put it in the IRA, because they can put in up to 100% earnings. Okay, if you want to help them out, and boy, when they're 12, 14, you start doing that five a couple times and see how that's going to build tax free until they retire. Wow, what a nice gift to your kids. Replace personal debt with home equity loans. How many got car loans out there that aren't on your home equity loan? If you do, can you deduct the interest? No. Credit card interest, can you deduct the interest? No. But if you go get a secured loan on your home, you have a home equity loan, can you deduct the interest? Okay. okay. Many banks will just take, put that home equity loan on there in the car you're making payments to somebody else. They'll just put the home equity on there. If you're paying them, you get the deduction. It just has to be secured by your home. You're in charge of some credit cards. I said you had to write a check. I was wrong. If we use a commercial credit card to pay some year-end bills, say I don't need cash, Gary, you talk about doing all these, I don't need cash, pay with the credit card. Do I get the deduction? Yeah. yeah. Now, if I have a Sinclair credit card and I use it at the Sinclair gas station, that's not one of the credit cards that counts. You can't use a department store type credit card. But MasterCard, Visa, American Express, those are the ones we're talking about. Okay, so they make a distinction. You use one of those commercial credit cards, that's just like writing a check. Dave Ramsey would be upset with me talking about that credit card. <laughs> <laughs> Pay interest on your loans that you're in. Okay? Loans are deductible, obviously. You've got a mortgage payment that's maybe due fifth. 5th of January, 2nd of January, 1st of January, pay it on the 25th so it has time to post. Pay it before the end of the year. Get one more interest payment in Just little things, timing of the payments that we can still do between now and the end of the year. Tuition credits, we said that uh, American Opportunity Credit's gonna go bye-bye, right, for 13. If you had some tuition bill for the second semester and you haven't hit your 4,000 yet, Pay it before the end of the year. You can pay it before the semester starts. Okay. Timing of the payments, because we don't know what's going to happen with tuition going forward. Convert regular IRAs to Roths. Okay. We said regulars have their benefits, and that's because I get to deduct it on the way in, but Roths have a lot of benefits, don't they? And what if I'm in a low income tax bracket? When I convert my regular to a Roth, i got to pay tax on it, don't I? Okay. Told people before, I got people that don't like to pay tax when they earn the income. They certainly don't like to pay it when they shift from one pocket to the other. But that's what you do here. But if you're in a low income bracket, think about it. So that Roth is really nice going forward. You can do that before the end of the year, any time. Gifting strategies, we talked about those. Anything before the end of the year, we can use up our 13 or our 26 or it's significant if we want to start using up our lifetime. Shift income to junior generations. What if you got some stocks that are appreciated? You sell them, you know you're in the 15% rate, maybe the kids are going to be in the lower rate. Gift it to them first, let them sell them. Let them use the money for tuition. C Corp accumulated earnings. Okay. Any of you that have C Corp have a lot of money built up in there. What's the dividend rate go to next year for a high income taxpayer? 43.4? And if we get our meeting together and we decide we got a half a million dollars sitting in our corporation, we better get out of there before we pay 43.4. If we distribute today, we pay how much? 15? A lot of those discussions going on. That's number 19, isn't it? Okay. Again, thank you very much for coming. Feel free. Some cookies and coffee back there if you'd like. Uh, enjoy your holiday seasons. Happy holidays to everybody. Thank you. Thank you.